In the past 20 years of aviation experience, I've taken close to a dozen FAA tests. And there's a lot of tricks on them, a lot of uh, things that can really trip people up and lead to getting a question wrong when the student knows that they got that question right and they know the material. So I wanted to take an opportunity here to go over five of my favorite FAA test taking tips. And these tips are important to know because like I've said elsewhere, the questions that you're going to see on your actual part 107 test are going to be different than any other question you've seen in your test prep journey because the FAA doesn't make their entire question bank public, uh, not even to educators getting people ready for the test. So the wording is going to be different. And because of that, you're going to need to watch out for a few of these things as you're going through the test. Make sure that you get the questions correct that you know are correct. And it could be the difference between a pass and a fail. The first tip is your standard multiple choice question power tip, and that's the process of elimination. You're going to be stuck on questions and you might be torn between two answers. Now, instead of trying to identify the correct answer, try to instead identify the incorrect answers. I know this seems redundant, but it's a completely different approach to test taking psychologically. You'd be surprised how many answers you'll find if you instead look for the wrong ones. There's usually on these FAA tests going to be one obviously incorrect answer that you can eliminate right away. And that's gonna make your decision between the other two much easier. Sometimes there could be two correct-ish answers. Like uh, one answer could be correct in one special circumstance and the other answer could be correct all the time. This is the concept of the most correct answer. And you're going to see this on the FAA test. Eliminate the least correct answer or the answer that is only correct in certain situations and go with the one that is always correct. Now here's a really silly example. Scooby-Doo is a, some of you may have zero clue. You know what the Scooby-Doo cartoon looks like. He is certainly not a toy poodle and he is certainly not a Shih Tzu. So process of elimination, Scooby-Doo must be a Great Dane. Take this approach into the FAA test on questions where you're not 100% certain of the correct answer. The second tip that was one of my favorites in the military and I used it on FAA tests also is RTFQ. Now I don't think I can say the F, but read the question. Read the entire question. The FAA loves to trick people with double negatives and providing two similar answers with different units. And this one is especially important, paying attention to the units of measure. If the question asks, when does class E airspace start inside of a thick shaded magenta line? And the first choice is 700 feet MSL. It's really easy to see that 700 and you've memorized that answer, 700. And so you put that one as the answer that you choose, but that's going to be incorrect. If you had read on to the second answer choice, you would have seen 700 feet AGL, which is the correct choice. So read the entire question, read every single answer, paying attention to the units of measure, especially on the remote pilot test. And the third one is to use the legends and the other figures that are in the test prep booklet. You're going to get a booklet when you go in for the test, the Airman Knowledge Testing Supplement, and there is a ton of great information in it. Most people don't even open it up until it says you know, reference figure 75, and then they go straight to figure 75. But the front few pages in the appendix have a VFR sectional chart legend and you can actually get a lot of airport and airspace question answers from this legend. We'll show you the difference between towered and untowered airports and airspace altitudes and things like that, radio frequencies. So there's a lot of great information in here. And you may also find answers to some of your other questions by referencing other charts and other figures in the booklet. You've got two hours, take it all if you need to. And then gratuitously mark questions as incomplete. The testing computer system allows you to mark questions to come back to later. 
Now, aside from the obvious point of using this to make sure that you answer every single question, this can be especially useful to jog your memory. The answer to a question that you're maybe only 60% sure about might be in the very next question. For example, one question might ask, Class D airspace is indicated by a blank line. Now you're not sure because you're nervous and you didn't look in the appendix in the front of the test prep booklet where it shows you what class D airspace is. And you're not sure if it's a solid blue line or a dash blue line, but then you go to the very next question and it asks the dash blue line that indicates class D airspace is below which type of airspace. And it just told you right there that class D is the dash blue line. So if you're not 100% sure of something, mark it as incomplete, continue through the rest of the test, and then go back to those incomplete questions. And maybe there was a, qu a question later on down the road that refreshed your memory on the one that you saw earlier in the test. And then finally, common sense goes a long way. As much as I know you prepared for the test, there's going to be a lot of questions that the FAA includes in your randomized tests that aren't in any publicly available question bank. They want to make sure that they are testing your understanding of the material and not your memorization of test answers. The results for all of these random questions get thrown into an FAA database so they can assess pilot preparation and understanding. Fortunately, a lot of these questions can be answered just by invoking common sense. For example, one question might read, your SUAS manufacturer does not publish a maintenance checklist. This means that A, no maintenance is required, B, the FAA will provide one for you, or C, as the PIC, you are responsible for developing your own. Now you've learned through your studies that the correct answer is C. But when I first took the part 107 test, this was not in any of the study materials. I didn't see it anywhere. They just threw this in here to test common sense. But what I did know is that a lot of the part 107 regulations are based around the responsibility of the pilot in command. So when I saw this question, my thought process was, there's probably certainly going to be some kind of maintenance that needs to happen. So uh, answer A, is ridiculous. I doubt the FAA will show me how to do it. Now that's probably not true. And I know that as the PIC, I'm ultimately responsible for everything in that drone. So that's a, you know, it's a mixture of process of elimination and common sense based on other things that I've learned in my studies. And take your time. Okay, I guess that's six things. You're going to have more than enough time to finish the test. It's not a race. You don't get extra credit for completing in under an hour. You've paid for two hours. You've budgeted for two hours. Take all two hours. When you finish the test, you've marked uh, your answers that you weren't sure about as incomplete. You've gone through the test. You've gone back to your incomplete answers and completed those. Once you're done with all of that, go over the whole entire thing again before telling the test proctor that you're done. It'd be really embarrassing to fail the test because you selected AGL for an answer that you knew the answer was MSL, but you picked the wrong one because you were rushing. Don't rush. These things happen even if you don't rush and a final once over can help prevent them. And again, that could be the difference between passing and failing. So as a quick review of all of these, use the process of elimination Read every single question all the way through and every single answer before answering. Use the legends and the other figures that are in your test prep booklet. Mark questions as incomplete. If you're not 100% sure of the answer, then go back to those at the end of the test and use common sense, taking your time for the entire test. Keep these things in mind and I guarantee you will increase your score.